How do you think Captain Flint did it, Mom? How would he swoop in out of nowhere and vanished without a trace? The TIE PH Phantom Stealth Fighter is one of the most advanced and deadly starfighters ever produced. It had the speed and maneuverability of a TIE Fighter, the firepower of a TIE Interceptor, and the shielding of a TIE Reaper, alongside a top-secret cloaking device, making it the pinnacle of Imperial fighter design and the best thing Sinar fleet systems ever produced. Unfortunately, its high cost, exotic materials, and unlucky development meant that the TIE Phantom never saw widespread use existing in only minute numbers across the Imperial Navy, and trusted to only the best of the best of the Imperial Starfighter Corps. The TIE Phantom began its development in the period immediately after the Battle of Yavin. The destruction of the Death Star had reminded the Empire that they were still vulnerable, and the deaths of so many high-ranking Imperial officers led to quite the shakeup within the world of Imperial weapons procurement. In this chaos, Emperor Palpatine ordered his least known Grand Admiral, Martio Batch, to begin a new research and development program with the goal of creating a new and mass-producible cloaked starship to catch the Rebel Alliance off guard and ensure their destruction. The resulting Phantom program was fraught with difficulty. Grand Admiral Batch did have access to engineers and designers from Sinar's Advanced Projects Laboratory, and those designers did have experience with building cloaking devices. But there was a major problem. All of the successful cloaking devices created by Sinar had used Stygium crystals as the basis of their cloaking fields, and these crystals were exceptionally rare. The only known source of crystals in the entire galaxy was the volcanic world of Aten II and the mines there were nowhere near up to the task of supplying enough crystals for a mass-produced starship. So, Admiral Batch set about experimenting with alternative materials to build a cloak with. His experiments lasted three years and were nearly all failures. There was some limited success with an ore named Hybridium, sourced from Garros IV, but the cloaks made with this conductor were incredibly power-intensive and created a double-blind effect leaving the user just as blind to the outside world as the outside world was to them. Finally, Admiral Batch decided that there was no replacement for Stygium crystals, and if Aten II could not provide enough of them in its current state, then that state would just have to be changed. Admiral Batch requisitioned the use of Battle Station Tarkin, an experimental testbed for what would eventually become the super laser mounted on the Eclipse-class Super Star Destroyer to destroy the planet of Aten II. The massive super laser was far less powerful than the one mounted on the Death Star, but the weapon was more than capable of shattering the surface of the planet and launching large portions of its mantle into orbit, where the waiting Imperial fleet could search the debris for Stygium crystals. The plan was a success, and with a substantial supply of Stygium crystals now in hand, Admiral Batch was able to create his cloaking device. To carry the cloaks, Admiral Batch selected Sinar's V-38 Assault Fighter. This starfighter had originally been developed during the Empire's initial search for a response to the Rebel snubfighter threat, but it had been rejected for Imperial service in favor of the TIE Interceptor. It was armed with five laser cannons, two under the cockpit and one at each wingtip. The weapons could be set to fire independently or in one massive volley, which gave the fighter an extremely high burst damage capacity. Useful if you can somehow sneak up on your opponent and destroy them in a single shot. It also carried a small shield generator, roughly equivalent in power to the one carried by Rebel A-Wings, allowing it to shrug off at least one or two hits without exploding as TIE fighters seem to do, though it was not enough to allow the fighter to hang around in dangerous engagements, so the V-38 would, somehow, have to disengage and give its shield time enough to recharge after absorbing only a couple hits. These features were not impressive enough for Imperial procurement during its original creation but their potential for use in a stealth fighter was recognized by Admiral Batch, and so the V-38 was fitted with his newest cloak and reborn as the TIE Phantom. Testing of the TIE Phantom proceeded immediately, and it showed the Phantom to be an exceptionally capable starfighter. 
The cloaking device allowed the fighter to position itself however it pleased before attacking, allowing it to ambush rebel fighters from ideal angles, limiting its target's ability to evade or return fire. The Phantom could then unleash a devastating burst of laser fire, likely destroying its target in a single volley, before turning away and re-engaging the cloak. Even if one of the target's wingmen managed to get a shot off at the Phantom, its shield would hold for long enough for the cloak to reactivate, allowing the ship to disappear and maneuver itself back into an optimal position, starting the whole thing over again. The 481st Experimental Starfighter Squadron made full use of the Phantom's abilities in the asteroid fields of Polis Massa, ambushing and destroying multiple squadrons of Rebel Alliance Y-Wings and X-Wings while using the area's local legends, those of a ghost ship haunting the asteroids ever since the Battle of Dryden during the Clone Wars, as cover for their tests. Unfortunately for the 481st and Admiral Batch, the Alliance was able to pull footage of the attacking TIE Phantoms off of a flight recorder from one of their destroyed patrols. The Rebels then massively increased their presence in the area, and the 481st was forced to cease their testing and return to Imdar Alpha, the main base for the Phantom Project and home of the only production line for the TIE Phantom. With the existence of the Phantoms now known, there was a possibility the Rebels could find the secret base at Imdar Alpha, and if so, they would be very vulnerable. So, the Empire dispatched the Super Star Destroyer Terror to defend it. This turned out to not be enough, though as Rebel agents were able to infiltrate the Terror, steal a TIE Phantom, cripple the Terror's main reactor, and destroy the ship. They then used the stolen Phantom to destroy the Phantom production line on Mdar Alpha, as well as the entire base, by once again targeting the main reactor. You know, the Empire really should stop leaving Starfighter-sized holes all throughout their superweapons. About the X-Wing-sized hole that leads directly to the core... You think that should be Millennium Falcon-sized? Oh, great thinking, Genius, Emperor. yes, yes. In any case, in the face of this utter failure, production of the best stealth fighter ever created was slowed dramatically. Admiral Batch retreated deep into the Outer Rim in an attempt to hide from the shame of his defeat, and without him driving the project forward, there was simply less demand for the extremely expensive fighter. While estimates vary, the cloaking device each Phantom was equipped with meant the fighter had a per-unit cost of approximately 375,000 credits, which was just too much for one fighter in the minds of the Imperial Starfighter Corps. So, the Phantom was built in only extremely limited numbers, and with the Battle of Endor and the death of the Emperor less than a year after the destruction of Imdar Alpha, the resources necessary to build the Phantoms simply dried up the shattering of the Empire leaving very little fat in the budget for experimental fighters with extremely rare components. And so, the TIE Phantom faded into obscurity, never reaching its full potential, never getting the opportunity to teach the Star Wars galaxy its favorite lesson. Stealth kills. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of College of Lore. If you have, and you want to know more about the TIE Fighter, cloaking devices, and all the other wonderful creations of the Empire's most prolific Starfighter manufacturer, check out our episode on Sinar Fleet Systems, where we cover everything there is to know about the manufacturing giant. Also, if there are other ships you want us to cover, or even other topics entirely, please let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe, as every bit of engagement our channel gets really helps us out. We're still aiming for that first great milestone of YouTube achievement, 1,000 subscribers, so every single subscriber really counts. Until next time, though, I have been Austin, and this has been College of Lore. Thank you for watching.